Welcome back. Now, if our world doesn't implode due to the financial meltdown, there's still debate over what we're doing to the planet, which prompted a number of questions, including this one, which falls to you, John Key. Hi, Mike Jowsey from Amberley. Which of our leaders will have the guts to stand up and say the climate change debate is still wide open? It is unclear at this stage, A, whether climate change is actually happening, and B, whether man-made emissions have any significant effect. Therefore, if elected to government, we will repeal the emissions trading scheme and extract New Zealand from the Kyoto Protocol. Do you accept climate change as man-made, John Key? I believe my man-made climate change is happening, and I think New Zealand does have to do something about it and play its part. But where I differ uh, from Helen Clark's view is I don't think New Zealand should be a world leader or carbon neutral because that will cost our economy jobs, it will export jobs and all sorts of products overseas at a time where we can least afford it going into recession. You repeal it? Uh, what we're going to do is amend the emissions trading scheme to do a few things. Because firstly, there's got to be balance. We've got to balance our environmental responsibilities with our economic opportunities. Let's have economic growth, but let's do our bit for the planet as well. Secondly, we don't want it to be a big money-making exercise. Look at those state-owned enterprises, those power companies. They're going to cream it off the emissions trading scheme. Their, 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 scheme their, their dividends will be much, much higher. We're going to have due regard to what's happening to Australia and their emissions trading scheme. There's no point in New Zealand having a fancy scheme that all of a sudden sends jobs overseas to Australia or other parts of the world. Yes, New Zealand's got to play its part, but we've got to be sensible about this. If we don't do that, in my opinion, it'd be very negative for our economy. And the only other one point I'd make, Mark, is this, that Helen Clark's record in this area, for all of the rhetoric, is very poor. When her government came into office, she promised by 2005 emissions would be okay. down 20%. Do you know what? Hang on. Our emissions are not only up 12%. I'll tell you this, Mark. Our <laughs> no, 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 emissions are rising faster than <laughs> America. Your, time is your up record, up. Helen, is actually worse <laughs> right, than George Mark, W. Bush's. Which Helen is Clark, not actually Mark, easy what is the point? to achieve. What is the point, Helen Clark? But that is true. Of us, of, what is the point, Helen Clark, of us being ahead of the world? Isn't it going to cost us? Actually, there's huge opportunities for us in becoming more sustainability. Our country's got a tremendous brand image. We're seen as clean and green. If we are seen in the affluent markets that we value the most as a dirty greenhouse gas polluting producer of goods and services, we're finished. We'll be only supplying the low value markets. So what's critical for us as a high value, innovative, high wage, high skill economy is to get with the sustainability co-papa and make sure that we're right onto it. Now, uh, there are a lot of things that we support uh, individual businesses to do and the way they structure their business to be sustainable. A lot of things we can support our families to do around uh, the household, but the leadership has to come from government. And that's why we have led with legislation for the emissions trading scheme, with the big Mark, investment the, in public there has transport. Been, there has been so been many things leadership. which no, no, make no, no, our no, no, country no, no, more sustainable. Can I deal with this barracking from my side and mm. say that we are absolutely determined that just as our country led with pride on being nuclear free, led with pride on votes for women, led with pride on social security, we will be prepared to lead on this. Whoever wanted to be a fast I, follower, our I, country is better okay, than let, that. Let's, let's, just, Keith, let's get a few things. Is there a cost? Let's, let's get a few. Of course there's a cost if we get this wrong. <laughs> they, these guys ran through an emissions trading scheme with 785 amendments that people couldn't even read. Look. The rhetoric is fantastic, right? We're going to be a world leader. Let's get this actually right. Our emissions profile has been rising dramatically. Do you know what our Kyoto liability is? What it's going to cost mum and dad out there? Helen Clark told them they'll make a billion dollars out of Kyoto. They're losing half a billion dollars. We all went to Bali, the 42 countries that are developed in the world that have responsibilities under Kyoto in December of last year. David Parker went representing the government. Helen, you know that. And what happened to yes, the 42 countries? They laid out where they were relative to Kyoto. Where was New Zealand? 38th. That's how poor our record okay. has been. We are not doing well in climate change. Your and, rhetoric and is amazing. Right, right, your record a lot is appalling, okay, Helen. Okay, just one second. I want to bring, want to bring Barry Soper into this now. Barry. Well, Prime Minister, you said in your opening statement that New Zealand had to be seen mm. as taking a principled stand on the international mm. stage. Now, you also said just then that we're already seen as clean and green around the world. Aren't we already taking that stand? Well, it's got to be more than slogan. And it's a brilliant slogan. 100% pure from Tourism New Zealand's a brilliant slogan. 
but I've been in the United Kingdom involved in debates, including on their television, where the issue is why should anyone in Britain buy lamb and dairy produce and kiwi fruit from New Zealand? Look at the carbon footprint, they say. There's campaigns now about travel miles. You shouldn't travel all the way to a place like New Zealand because of the carbon footprint. Now, if we are to overcome those perceptions, we have to show that we are getting real about these issues. And that's why we push sustainable business models. It's why we push the big and important legislation that our government is putting through. It's Mark, why we Helen's push the investment point. in public Helen, transport Helen's 15 got, times as much got, as we inherited from the National Hel Party. I think we're in Helen's, danger of John Key agreeing with you here. Helen's actually I don't think Helen's so. Helen's actually somehow. got a fair point. Yeah. There's, there's, no, there's no question that if we don't play our part in climate change, the way the world will view us will hurt us. So of course we've got to play our part. But there's a difference actually being, being saying, look, I want to lead the world, be carbon neutral, no emissions, and I don't care, That's not if, what job, carbon neutrality I don't care is, John. if jobs get closed <laughs> down, I don't care if people lose their job. Mm. But what is the point when New Zealand is such a tiny mm. part of world emissions, 0.4%? What is the point in New Zealand closing down its industry when China's starting a coal-fired power plant every week or two? Let's have balance and perspective. Well, okay, of course, let's do the, the emissions economic trading growth, scheme is environmental so responsibility. That that okay. Well, that's not and true. John it's a terribly, is well just aware a terribly of that. Sorry, for posing just for a sec. Just before we finish this section, we're sticking with the environmental issues. This question's for you, Helen Clark. Hi, I'm Craig from Freeman's Bay. And I'm Fraser from Afero Bay. And together, we're the Bay Brothers. I wonder if you could give us an update on where you're at with sustainability. What exactly does sustainability mean to you? And when do you think New Zealand will be a sustainable country? We hear this. What is sustainability, Helen Clark? What is it? It's ensuring that we don't squander all the resources of our planet and our generation, but that we pass on to future generations a planet that is sustainable. Now, I don't think there's any dispute, and this really goes back to the earlier question, about the human impact on our changing climate. We have the Royal Academies of all the G8 economies agreeing on that. So we have to change, every country, the way that we are living. And that's why we have to put the emphasis on renewable energy. It's why we need the emissions trading scheme in place to get more incentives for afforestation. It's why we need those public transport investments. It's why we need Kiwi Rail. It's why we need it serving urban uh, consumers. We need to do a lot of things to become much more sustainable so that we leave a planet where there are still polar ice caps, where we've still got glaciers, where there's still the great tropical forests, where there's still people able to live on low-lying atolls and in the Mark, Pacific. Okay. This a, a, is what is at stake a, if right. we don't, a, 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 if we ignore a, it the way the National Party response, does. John a fair point, but let's look at the record. Under Helen Clark's leadership, forestry, we've never cut down more trees than we have in the last three years. Her, her policies have actually not worked in this area. Renewable energy and lights, good idea, but actually the amount of coal-fired energy in New Zealand coming from electricity has doubled from 4% to 8%. So again, one thing, the, the rhetoric, amazing and fantastic and all very laudable, but when you really go and look at the record, it doesn't actually stack up to what's been happening. Okay, listen, we're going to be back after the break where we look at the state of our schools and where our leaders stand on law and order.